Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel um, and this is my channel where I share everything to do with living a handmade, homegrown and slow life. Um, so welcome if you're new. We have had lots of new subscribers so welcome. Apologies for all the banging and noise outside. <laughs> That's Pearl the dog. <laughs> if you watched last week's vlog you may have seen her. She is very noisy. Whenever I film these videos and start talking she seems to get really excited. I think she thinks that like there's somebody else here <laughs> so she like tries to get into the room <laughs> but hopefully she won't be too noisy today. Um, today's video I thought I would do a January and February makes video which is very exciting my first finished makes of 2024 video um so i tend to do these every other month because i don't tend to make enough um in one month to do it really um i try not to sew too much because i was sewing a lot so i sort of massively slowed down my sewing <laughs> um and i'm not a particularly fast knitter and um you know the whole point of me making my own clothes is to be slower and more sustainable so yeah i don't do these as like a monthly thing um but i like doing them every other month so i do like six a year so um we should probably just get started really um we could start with sewing i think so this month has been the month of blind sewing <laughs> um so we redecorated our living room a while ago um and then I wasn't sure about the colour and I was like oh I wasn't sure what to do da, da, da. so we were like should we repaint it again but it was so much work and it was like a whole thing and then we thought we might sell the house <laughs> so basically the living room got painted and that was it it just sort of stayed there and so for the last six months since we decided to stay a little bit longer in this house and I decided I did like the colour I just wanted to improve it we've been slowly like doing things up we've bought secondhand furniture and upcycled it and painted it and um you know bought like tablecloths and things like that because we have our dining table in the living room um I made a curtain which was in one of my videos I think it was in my makes video back in November I made a curtain for the living room and then I was also going to make a blind but I just didn't get around to it until February because I was really unwell um, in December and January with a really bad virus and I didn't really do any sewing at all so I finally got round to making the blind <laughs> um, for the living room and I'm so pleased with it and um, I obviously can't show you like hold it up <laughs> because it's obviously attached to the wall um, but I will put a little video in now of I've got a video of the blind coming down um, I reused all of the stuff from the original blind that was there so I reused the backing fabric and the little tapes that the, um, poles go into and the bottom bit like basically everything I just replaced the front fabric um which we're trying to do a, a lot in this house like firstly to save money but also like to be a bit more sustainable and reusing stuff there's no point in buying new stuff when we've got perfectly serviceable stuff here um so yeah i just replaced the front on that um i did the same with the curtain as well i used the um the back of the curtain and the original curtain rod and everything we painted the curtain rod and like we've painted light fittings and things like that again because um we don't want to replace them we just want to sort of change the style a bit but yeah I'm really really pleased with that my first ever blind um there's definitely some things that I would improve on um which I'll go into in a bit actually <laughs> um but yeah I think it was a good first try and then I made another blind hence me saying <laughs> um there are things that i would improve on so with this second blind i have improved on a few things but again i learned quite a lot on the second blind so this blind is for our bedroom which we decorated last weekend um now the lounge is done we moved on to the bedroom um i will put up a video of that for you so that you can see it's not finished yet we've still got to paint the wardrobe doors and paint the bedroom door um but we went for a lovely white um and then a feature wall of laura ashley wallpaper behind the bed and then william morris fabric for the blinds and we've got two big windows so i've made two blinds I've, well i've only made a blind and a half <laughs> i've made one blind and then i've sort of half made the other blind um i didn't really get chance to make both of them before we finished decorating the room but i made enough of one so i basically like sewed the 
back and the front fabric together and put the velcro on the top so it can literally go up but it hasn't got any poles or any string or anything yet so I'm hoping to finish that off next week so I've made two and a half blinds this month um but yeah really really pleased with that it's looking really really pretty and again as I say it's definitely things that I would improve on uh things that I would change um but I mentioned in a video at the beginning of the year about my intentions for the year that this was something that I really wanted to focus on was learning new skills a new skill every month so last month i did um focaccia i learned how to make focaccia bread um and this month i have taught myself how to make blinds and i need to improve on both of those because i am like miles away from being ready to <laughs> make amazing focaccia and my blinds are definitely not perfect but it's a start and you know they're both life skills I'll be making bread forever and probably be making blinds in the next house that we buy and then we may even buy another house after that so <laughs> it's a really good skill to have so I'm really pleased that I managed to figure that out um I used a kit from Terry's Fabrics they're really good actually their Roman blind kit really easy to follow it comes with full instructions um if you're a sewer already it's really easy because it's basically just straight lines the most difficult part I had was having the space so I think that like I didn't have time this time but in future if I was going to make blinds I might go to my parents to do it just because they have a really big dining table and that's essentially what you need is a big flat space we don't even have it we didn't even have enough floor space to put the massive because the fabric came on a big roll because it's a very wide width I think it was 138 centimeter width and it was just like full width um, and I lay that down on the floor and there like wasn't enough space to get it completely flat so I would say that that's one thing that's really useful is if you can find a space like that's a big table or a big floor space where you can work that is much better because you do need to be able to get it flat and need to be able to do like all your measuring and stuff um but yeah i would really recommend the terry's fabric um blind kits if you're wanting to make your own blind um so yeah those that was the first three things well two and a half things that i've sewn and then i'll just show you i've got it here with the leftover blind fabric from downstairs i just run up this cushion um I've literally just stuffed it with toy stuffing. I talked about this last week. It was in my vlog actually last week that I made this. Um, it's a really basic cushion. Um, it was just literally what was left. There was a rectangle of fabric left. Um, and I was like, great, I'll fold that in half and it'll make a really nice cushion. And we didn't have a cushion inner that would work for that. So I thought rather than like buying one, I've got a bunch of toy stuffing. So I've just filled it with toy stuffing, which obviously means I can't like change it in any way. This cushion is now this cushion forever <laughs> but um i'm quite pleased with it um i really like it i love i just love this fabric the fabric that we chose for downstairs it's very much like my kind of style with the lovely it's the potager it's called the fabric is called the potager which means like kitchen garden in french and it's got beehives and bees and carrots and flowers and all sorts of beautiful things on it um, and we're going to pick out all those colors um in some cushions i need to make some more cushions knitted ones but yeah for now this is what i sewed up in February so I'm saying February because I didn't really do any sewing in January because I was so ill so these are all from February but I did do some knitting in January so yeah I made that cushion um and really pleased with all the homeware like I haven't really done much soft furnishings and homeware before um but now that I've kind of got quite a good wardrobe of handmade clothes really beautiful handmade clothes that I love and I wear all the time I'm not needing clothes as much and I'm trying to like work through my stash and I'm trying to fill gaps so there's a bit more time now to work on things like throw cushions and quilts and blinds and things like that which is really great because um it's just nice to have some handmade homeware and so much cheaper <laughs> to do it that way um unlike dressmaking which you don't really save any money when you um make your own clothes people think you do but you really don't if you buy high quality ethical fabric i suppose you can save money i do buy secondhand i buy things like curtains and bed sheets and things like that from the charity shop so that's a good way to keep it cheap but um yeah with things like high quality curtains and blinds you do actually save some money i found anyway if i was to 
buy those pre-made in the fabric that I wanted they would have been a lot more expensive so um yeah I'm really pleased with all of the how homeware that I've made and there will be a lot more to come this year so stay tuned for that the one piece of dress making that I made is this dress this is the Bakerloo dress by Nina Lee Patterns. Um, it's really hard to see because it's very bright. I'm hoping the camera will focus a little bit. Is it focused a bit? <laughs> but basically there's a collar. <laughs> I think you'll be able to see it better in the clips I've got of me wearing it. Um, it's a, I've made a lovely long sleeved version with the collar and I just did it all the same. I know some people pick out a colour which I really do like but that would have meant going and buying more fabric which I just thought was a bit unnecessary. Um, to do the frill on the collar just to get that contrast i think it's quite pretty as it is it's definitely like a bold choice <laughs> it's a big exciting bold like vintage style sort of 70s style fabric but i really love that it makes me really happy um I really like wearing it. I sort of envisioned that it was going to be an autumn dress because the fabric is burgundy with yellow flowers on so I was like okay that will be great for um, like autumnal dressing um, and I started it in November and then got really sick and couldn't finish it but actually I've realised because it's covered in beautiful you know yellow daisies it feels quite spring like although it's got that burgundy background it does feel spring like so it's a good one for early spring and I've almost finished a yellow cardigan that is going to go with it knitting a yellow cardigan that's going to go with it so i think that's going to be a really nice early spring outfit because obviously it is long sleeve so i don't think it'll go much further than april um the end of april depending on how warm it gets but yeah i'm really really pleased with it it's really cute i feel really cute when i wear it. it's definitely as i say a bit of a statement piece which i quite like um i've started watching little house on the prairie i've never watched it before um i'm on series three at the moment i'm really loving it it's like my relaxing afternoon i'll put like a couple of episodes on whilst i do some knitting um because i have a sort of like rest every afternoon because of my chronic fatigue um and um they wear a lot of dresses like this with like big collars <laughs> and like little puffy sleeves leaves and um they have like ruffles on the edge as well and i just like i look like i'm in little house on the prairie in this dress <laughs> but um yeah i really really like it i'm definitely going to make the bakerloo again i think it might be nice because the pattern comes as a dress and a blouse i think it would be nice to make the blouse to wear under dungarees i think that would look really cute because i don't really wear jeans or trousers at all to be perfectly honest with you i'm a dress person but I do like to wear dungarees um, when I'm in the mood to wear like trousers and so having um, a blouse like with a cute collar just to like smarten them up a bit I think could be really really nice for the spring so um, yeah I may make a Bakerloo blouse out of some fabric out of stash we will see. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to the knitting. Um, not that there's loads of knitting. <laughs> um, I was working on one particular project for all of January and most of February. Um, so let's show you that one first. Okay, so this is my finished, oh my gosh, it's so bright. I don't know if you can see that. This is my finished Moby sweater. So this is the Moby sweater man. Um, I will put up some videos and pictures and stuff so you can see this better because I'm not really doing very well a very good job at holding it up um this is the Moby Sweater Man by Petite Knit um I love Petite Knit patterns they are just the best they are so easy to follow you know this one came with I think like 20 pages of instructions and I know some people don't like that but I like the fact that she literally holds your hand through it and it's so easy to do um i am also a textural knitter i absolutely love cables and lace and texture in one color i'm not a color work person i'm not a fan of of color work at all um so this was just like an absolute delight of a project i worked in drops lima which is i think it is 35 percent alpaca and 65 percent wool so it's a gorgeous soft yarn so so cozy and warm um so the alpaca really brings that softness um and it was just an absolute joy to work with um it's a bit of a dupe really for rowan's um alpaca soft dk however what i would say is because rowan uses baby alpaca and i think virgin wool this is um got a bit more structure to it this yarn because it's just normal wool normal alpaca 
so it's lovely soft lovely cozy gorgeous natural fiber but it's got some real structure to it i've used it to make a hat for myself um as well and i and it's again it's that kind of it's like a ribbed pattern it holds like cables and texture really really well so i'd really recommend that yarn um this was my husband's anniversary present it was our seven year wedding anniversary this year and traditionally in the uk you give a present of wool um so i decided to make him a jumper because obviously like i couldn't let that pass that's like the dream theme <laughs> um so yeah i made him this jumper he tends to get one jumper a year anyway um but yeah i just absolutely sped through this it took me seven weeks and i think it would have taken six had i not been still struggling with my chest pain because i did have to put it down a couple of times um i don't know i just found it so easy it was so quick and so enjoyable uh once i got the cable patterns like in my head i could just go um and it was just oh it was such a delight i absolutely loved it and i'm thinking i'm definitely gonna have to make this pattern again i'm tempted to make one for me like a cropped one to wear with dresses and i'm also tempted to make um one or maybe a few for my nephews um just because it's so gorgeous the problem is my nephews can't wear wool they find it like itchy and it gives them a rash and stuff so um that makes me a bit sad so i'd have to make it out of acrylic and i don't know if it would come out as nicely in acrylic um but yeah i will put up some shots of this i think i already will have put up some shots of this so you can see it better um but i'm really really pleased with how it's come out i have to say though I did my swatch and it was perfect tension but I did my swatch flat and then once I knitted it up in the round my tension was obviously a lot tighter um so I need to start doing my swatches in the round I think because that is a bit of a problem um it was fine we've blocked it and I managed to spread it out but it's still about an inch smaller across the chest than it should be um than the pattern said it should be so I do think that in the future I do need to do like in the round swatches um which I've sort of like watched some videos on how to do that um because I'm clearly just a little bit looser when I knit flat um but yeah I'm really really pleased with it I think it's probably one of my best knits ever this and the Jenny jacket which I made last year which is another petite knit pattern I'm just picking by the way I'm just picking off um we have a black dog so I'm just picking off black dog fur um yeah I just really love this and he loves it too he's worn it quite a bit already because we had a cold snap it is incredibly warm it's one of those jumpers where it's like it's really cold you need to wear a really cozy jumper um especially because I built the collar up he wanted a higher collar so it's not supposed to be quite this big I think this is six centimeters and I think it's supposed to be three or four so I went a few more centimeters and it's a double folded collar so it's a really cozy high neck collar which is what he wanted um so yeah we knew he wouldn't probably wouldn't get much wear out of this until like November so he's wearing it a bit now because we've had a bit of cold weather but it's going to be warming up quite a lot soon because it's March um tomorrow so I'm filming this on the last day of February <laughs> um so yeah I think that um basically he will probably put this away until the winter but it'll be a really good one for the winter we do get very cold winters in the Cotswolds sometimes um so yeah really pleased with this knit so soft just want to like touch it all the time <laughs> okay my final make mixer probably it's two makes of um 20 of 2024 no <laughs> of January and February um are my socks so technically I finished one of these um, in at the end of December. I knitted one at Christmas because I needed a really easy, simple project because I was so sick over Christmas with this virus. Um, but um, I never really count socks as a finished project until I've got two because you're not just going around wearing one sock, are you? That would be ridiculous. So <laughs> um, I finished this second sock um, in February. I went to a conference with my church and I'd finished Russell's jumper by that point. So I just took the sock and um, during the seminars, I sat and knitted on it and got it finished. And I actually ended up starting a second sock as well because I got so much knitting done. <laughs> but this yarn, I'm just like throwing these socks around. This yarn is the um i can't remember it's a taylor swift colorway from james makes yarns um when i saw it it just made me think of a monet painting to be honest i was like those colors it's an absolute monet painting i just fell in love with it and i was like those colors are really nice as well for like um winter early spring it reminds me of kind of like frozen 
lakes and early sunsets and that kind of colours. So um, I really wanted to make these in like January, February. Um, so yeah, I've already worn them a couple of times. I'm just, I've just washed them. So I've blocked them. I always block my handmade socks after I wash them in the washing machine. So um, I'm just re-blocking them. But yeah, I'm so, so pleased with these. They are so soft. They're the first socks I've ever made in a merino base. I normally make a, like a wool base. So I've made quite a few with West Yorkshire spinners. They use, I think, blue face Leicester wool and nylon whereas this is a merino and nylon and it's so much softer and therefore also like a bit saggier and a bit sort of like not so much structure to them but then they're just really nice like soft cozy socks so yeah they're already getting quite a lot of wear um so far this year okay so that is everything that i made in january and february um i am really excited for march because i've got lots of really exciting projects coming up i've cut out a davenport dress in some beautiful william morris fabric from work which i shared about in my spring sewing plans video um I have also got the blind to finish in the bedroom and some throw cushions with the leftover blind fabric in the bedroom. Um, I am coming to finish a yellow cardigan that goes with both the Davenport dress and the dress that I've shown you today. And I'm also starting a new cardigan with yarn from Stash for my birthday party, which is in April. So there's just so many exciting makes. So I'll probably do another one of these videos at the end of April with everything that I've made in March and April. Um, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that thank you to everybody that has become a paid subscriber on my substack it really means a lot to me that you guys support my work um if you would like to support my work financially you would like to help me to continue making content um becoming a paid subscriber on my substack is a really great way to do that it's five pounds a month so it's less than a coffee and cake a month um and you get a um newsletter and three beautiful articles well depending on how many weeks there are in the month three or four beautiful articles um so basically every thursday you get a post um sent straight into your um email box um telling you uh how to live a handmade homegrown and slow life or to do with that kind of stuff um so do check it out i'll leave the link in my description um and as i say i really appreciate appreciate I can't speak. I really appreciate the people who've already become paid subscribers. It really does help me to continue making content and continue doing what I am doing. So thank you so much. Um, I will see you next time, next week. I hope you all have a wonderful week, guys. Bye.